Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are going to be doing some more AP Physics 1 uh, rotational um, free response questions. As usual, I suggest you pause the video and attempt the problem, and then keep watching after you've attempted it. An inclined plane makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal shown above. A solid sphere radius r and mass m initially at rest in the position shown, such that the lowest point of the sphere is the vertical height h. Of the base of the plane. The sphere is released and rolls out of the plane without slipping. The moment of inertia of a sphere, that's rotational inertia, is 2 fifths mr squared over 5. Uh, express your answer in terms of m, r, h, and g. Uh, determine the following for the sphere when it's at the bottom of the plane. It's translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. So it's, oh, let's do a over here. It's, um, Linear, basically what's going to happen is um, the total energy at the bottom has to equal its potential energy. So we're going to have 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared equals mgh. So um, this is the kinetic energy it will have gained, and this is the uh, rotational energy it will gain. And this is due to this potential energy. So let's solve for, um, let's plug in what I is. So this is 1 half mv squared. We'll leave that alone. Uh, 1 half I, which is 2 fifths mr squared times omega squared, which is v over r quantity squared. Gh. The r squareds cancel here. The m's also all cancel on all of these. So I get 1 half v squared plus 1 fifth v squared equals gh. So 1 half plus 1 fifth is 7 tenths. So I get 7 tenths v squared is equal to gh. So v is equal to 10 sevenths gh. I can take the square root of that. Okay. And it's. To find omega, it's v over r. So it's just simply 1 over r times the square root of 10 sevenths gh. Okay, so that's its angular moment, angular velocity. Uh, B, determine the falling sphere when it's on the plane, its linear acceleration, and the magnitude of the frictional force acting on it. Let's take a look at the free body diagram on this. I got a force going down, that's mg. I have a normal force, and then I have friction acting this way here. So those are the three forces acting on it. Now the net forces have to be zero, and the um, yeah, the net f actually not sorry not the net force is zero. The net force is equal to m a, and also the net torque is equal to whatever its uh, angular acceleration. So let's do the net force, and let's do it in this direction. This is the most interesting direction. Um, let's see. Uh, in the Along the ramp, that's the x direction. We'll call it the x direction. Um, really, I care about this component of mg. This is mg sine theta. So the net force in the x direction is equal to mg positive mg sine theta minus force of friction and that has to equal to ma okay because it is accelerating in the x direction so um you know I, I don't know the force of friction i also don't know the acceleration so uh this is not enough so then i need to look at the net torque on this system well the normal force is in parallel to the r vector. Remember, if I look at this and I look at the normal force like Fn, well, so which one is causing a torque, right? Each force can cause a torque. Mg is acting at the center of rotation, so when I do uh, the distance from the point of rotation times the force, um, gravity doesn't cause rotation, right? So that's, that's zero torque there. And the normal force acts at this point, which is always is in parallel to the r vector here. Right, so so because these have no perpendic, they're not perpendicular to each other at all. The normal force also doesn't apply torque, 
So only the force of friction applies to torque because the point of uh, the R vector, which is the point of rotation to where the force is being applied, uh, it has a perpendicular to the force to force of friction. So this net torque is force of friction times R. And that has to equal net torques always equal to I alpha. That's equal to two fifths m r squared, and alpha is equal to a over r. So alpha I do times a over r. So that cancels one of those, and then dividing by r cancels the remaining r. So the force of friction is just equal to two fifths m a. So I can put that into this equation. I get. What am I trying to find first? I'm trying to find the acceleration first. Doesn't really matter, but since I have this, I'm going to plug into there. So I have in this equation, I have mg sine theta minus two fifths ma is equal to ma. So mg sine theta, combining the ma terms, one plus two fifths is seven fifths ma. The m's cancel, and a would equal five sevenths g sine theta. Okay, And then we can calculate the force of friction by multiplying this by 2 fifths. So the force of friction then, which is the second part of this question, is equal to 2 fifths times m times a, which we already determined, which is 5 seventh g sine theta. So force of friction is equal to, let's see, the fives cancel. That would be 2 sevenths G M oops M G M G sine theta. Yeah, there you go. Now the solid sphere is replaced by a hollow sphere of identical radius r and mass m. The hollow sphere, which is released from the same location as solid sphere, rolled down to the incline without slipping. So for a hollow sphere, the rotational inertia is equal to uh, m r squared. What is the total kinetic energy of the hollow sphere at the bottom of the plane? Well, the total kinetic energy, uh, both rotational, has to still equal mgh, right? Because all of the potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy, both rotational and um, uh, rotational and um, linear kinetic energy. Um, So, but that's made up of one half mv squared plus one half i omega squared, right? Um, one half m r squared times v over r squared. So this energy becomes the r squareds cancel again. This just becomes m v squared. So, so you see before. It was 7 tenths mv squared. Now it's a full mv squared. So v, because it's, because it's, um, it's got a larger uh, rotational inertia, um, what does that mean? Let, let, let's compare. If I, if I solve, so v is equal to the square root of gh, right? And compared to here, this velocity was higher. And that's because this thing is easier to rotate. Um, with the lower rotational inertia, um, it spins faster. Okay, so it's easier to spin. So that means, um, um, basically, well, so this V will be less. And that would be my justification. You could just simply solve the problem. Or you could just do kind of an energy explanation, like a little qualitative explanation as to what's happening. But really, because I is smaller, it makes it easier to turn and rotate. And so there's sort of less rotational energy overall. And so that means more of the energy goes into the linear kinetic energy. Okay, so... Hope you found that helpful. Um, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.